the Women Matters meeting again, it's starting to be cold or maybe not. So we want to talk about heat and cold and whatever is connected. And starting with a check-in as always. Oh, who is coming? Christine, but she takes some time. So we start with the first arrival. I wanted to start with the last arrival, but now we do it with the first, Monia. Okay. <laughs> uh, it's getting colder in Vienna, uh, but it's still sunny and nice. So, and today I went uh, to the cemetery and to the grave of my parents and my grandmother and yeah, it's, yeah, it's, that's the way it is. And we are preparing my, our 80th, the celebration for our 80th birthday, my husband and mine. This was in June. And we have to sit, sit all, to seat all the people, how they sit. It's, it's terrible, it's terrible. And I noticed that actually all of the people coming, nobody really knows me. They don't really know what interests me. They don't really know what I'm burning for. And that's okay. <laughs> because that's okay. That's the way it is. Uh, but this I, last night, I, I sort of yeah, I said, yeah, they really don't know me. And the people who know me, they don't, they don't come at this celebration because they were not invited. Because this is actually more dating back to my our childhood and the study years and abroad. So I'm wondering if we could talk about how many people really know me. <laughs> okay. And I pass on to uh, who was second? I don't know. Uh, Haneli was second here. Mm -hmm. I think it was Gertrude. <laughs> you can go, Gertrude. <laughs> Great. Oh, thank you, everyone. It's wonderful to be here. I just came out of a session earlier where there was somebody from Ghana and Japan dancing and a traditional dance. And then a lady from Kenya speaking about they, they, um, the indigenous people who live in the forests and how the government is chasing them out of the forest in the name of conservation, but it's actually to take out the trees and plant grain and cattle and sheep on there. So it was just distraught quite distraughting to hear that, um, to be present to something like that. Uh, because I've been many times in Kenya, I worked there a lot with the government, and I wasn't even aware of these indigenous people living in this forest. So it just took me into a very deep space of, we just, your, your question now, how many people really know you? It showed me how little I know some places on my continent where I worked a lot. So it just took me into that space again. And yeah, now I feel it over my body as I'm speaking about it, how little we really know about each other, even if it's in common places. And yeah, the weather is very interesting. We have very hot days, the one day, and then the next day, very cold. So it's up and down, up and down. We had beautiful rain, which is good also in parts of the country that's very dry, where there was a drought there. So they received a lot of rain, which we're grateful for. Um, but yes, the weather patterns are also here. Very interesting, stormy in parts of the country as well, um, which is weird for this time of the year. And otherwise, I'm good. Thank you. I'm really grateful to be here with you. And I'm passing on to Gertrude then. <laughs> Thank you, Gertrude. Yeah, <clears throat> I'm just coming home from meeting my girls in Hamburg, which was quite a ride, uh, but this was the only time after more than a year that I could see them all and the grandchildren. And so it was really like a wonderful time to be together. And yeah. The kids are four and six and they had so much fun and telling stories they just invented and all. <laughs> so it was a really nice time. I didn't see my brother because he was sick. And so I 
that's one little stain on this. But uh, yeah, it was really, really nice to, to be here and come back to, from that, that wonderful sunny weekend in Hamburg. Ah, the topic, I, I don't know. I don't know yet, but um, I think, yeah, who, who knows me? Who, whom do I know? <laughs> it's not so easy to answer. And so I leave it to that and we can come back to that. I go with Beatrice. Hello. Um, let's see. I unfortunately missed last session because I was uh, I was at the aquarium and the zoo with a little four year old. Um, I've been working a lot. Um, I've been very busy. I'm still struggling to find the balance between time for myself and time that I'm giving to other people. Um, I think right now, in terms of who knows me, I'm trying to invest in knowing myself. I think that's that's the <laughs> that's the direction I'm trying to go. I, but I think that's an interesting question. I think there's, we live different. Well, we'll get into that when we get into the topic. This is check-in. Um, what else? Uh, it's getting colder here, um, but my apartment stays nice and toasty. Um, and um, I performed yesterday. Um, I had another performance a couple of weeks ago. Um, I recently, and then I went to a number of uh, dance performances in the last couple of weeks. There's a, there's a fall dance festival in New York that didn't happen last year because of the pandemic, but this year they were able to uh, do it again, uh, vaccinated only, keeping your masks on. But um, yeah, that was amazing and inspiring. And actually it was the first time back in the theater since after the pan since, since the beginning of the pandemic. And I forgot, I forgot that feeling and I forgot how much I love the feeling of sitting with a lot of people who are applauding and cheering and, and hearing that chatter in between pieces where everyone's talking excitedly, but you can't hear the words and, you know, watching the red curtain kind of, you know, moving a little bit in anticipation before it comes, I don't know, just all of it, the lights dim and everyone hushes it all those sensations and feelings and sights and sounds um i love it i forgot that i loved it i forgot that that was something that was part of my life before um and it also my big news is we'll see we'll see where it goes but i've decided that i want to really take seriously a performance career and i and it's a little late <laughs> Most people do this, uh, you know, in their 20s. Um, I'm almost 30 and I'm deciding now that I want to become a professional dancer. But um, anyway, that's my that was my big inspiration and big decision. And so I'm now working on trying to get back in shape and go back to class. And um, really, you know, this is the beginning of my training montage. And, you know, in the movies where the person decides, makes a big decision and has to go through all the grueling work. Well, this is the beginning of that. So. Anyway, that's my long-winded check-in, but those are the those are the updates. And um, I'm excited. I'm terrified. I don't know if it's going to, I don't know how long I'll follow through. We'll see where it goes. But for the moment, I have a fire and I want to pursue it. So um, I will pass to Christine. Hello. Um, that sounds great, Beatrice. Congratulations for coming to that conclusion. Um, we're having a change of weather here. We're gonna get rain and uh, supposedly it's gonna be the end of fire season, which is good. We've had rain in September and October and we usually don't even get rain until around Christmas time. So this is really early. And again, a different weather pattern than normal, but it's welcome. Um, Tom and I went away for the weekend. We went up to the mountains and uh, I pretty much have to initiate doing these kind of adventures. Uh, Tom is a home buddy and he'd be perfectly happy to stay at home. 
um, and do things around the house, but I like to get away. So we went up to the mountains, um, which was nice. Uh, did a little bit of hiking, nothing very strenuous, but still out in nature. And um, we, we took some time to kind of sit out in nature on some boulders and it was just so pleasant. It was like big mind, you know, the, the wind on my face was really um, what I noticed. The sun was shining, but more than that, I noticed the, this kind of gentle uh, breeze uh, coming across my face, which just felt lovely. And um, so it was great. I love being out in nature. Um, I don't get much of that in my daily life. So it was very welcome. And uh, what else? Um, I don't know. It's Monday. And every Monday I ask myself, what am I doing? <laughs> Why am I still working? And then I trudge through my week and I forget the question until it's next Monday. And I ask it again. So, um, yeah. So it's Monday. So I'm wondering, why am I still doing this? But I've got a week full of appointments and things to do. So yeah. Um, next Monday evening, um, I'm going to a concert, a big concert in a uh, arena um, indoors. So I'm really looking forward to that. It's been the first thing to return to um, like that, uh, you know, since the beginning of the pandemic. And um, I don't know, I'm sure all of you know who James Taylor is because he's pretty famous. Um, maybe you don't know Jackson Brown or maybe you do know Jackson Brown, I don't know. But those are the two people who are performing. And since they're both well into their 70s, who knows how many more years they will tour and be available um, to see in person. So um, I have never seen James Taylor in person. I've seen Jackson Brown uh, a number of times in person. He's one of my favorites. So I'm really looking forward to that. I uh, can't wait to do that next Monday. But I'm going by myself. So I just going alone, which I've done before, but it's a, it's a little bit of an odd experience to just go by myself, but um, I'll enjoy it. So that's it. Heidi, did you check in yet? I didn't, but let's ask Victoria if she is um, visible somewhere. It's early in the morning, we know that. Yes, yes, yes. Hi, it's early in the morning. Um, well, I shouldn't, <laughs> right after Christine, that seems ridiculous. She's totally a live wire. <laughs> but Christine sounds like she just had, had I don't know, <laughs> afternoon tea or something. Um, <laughs> no, my computer's acting up, I'm sorry. It's. Um, I forgot to turn it off last night and I had a really heavy day of use yesterday. So I guess it's, um, it's, it's uh, taking its revenge. Um, I, yeah, I guess that's, that, that's the covers the waterfront. Um, I'm, I'm sort of burning out on the computer, which I remember you saying Heidi a long time ago when the family came. Um, so I'm, kind of rethinking things. I, I spent a lot of time during the weekend um, trying to make some kind of order in at least part of my house. And it the room that I tackled was the, the so-called music room, which in which there has been no music for I don't know how long, <laughs> where I have my um, continuo organ um, and which is like a Stradivarius for, for continual organs. It was hand built for me, um, custom built um, years ago. And I thought I was gonna use it every day and I used it maybe a dozen times in the last 10 years. Um, anyway, that's another story. But if sort of making that room look as nice as possible under the circumstances, um, and the, I have a piano there too, of course. And all my violins have been living in there since I stopped playing the violin, which maybe maybe the music room is more like a graveyard. Um, anyway, but yesterday it, I suddenly thought, what am I doing? Life is so short. I could live just, a, this could be my last day. And do I want to spend it on the computer or 
or would I rather like try to play the piano or the organ or the violin or do something? So it was kind of a poignant moment. And then when I realized I'm totally out of shape in all my instruments, I thought, no, no, I'd much rather spend my last day on the computer. <laughs> so, um, so that's where I am now. And I'm going to pass to you, Heidi, because I'm, I'm still asleep. So that was just kind of a random improvisation. And I'm sorry I missed the check-ins because I would love to know how all of you are doing. Anyway, um, to you, Heidi, and um, here's to you. I just got some tea, <laughs> a huge yeah. cup. I thank you. I thank you. I have to warn you, I sometimes it's freezing. It seems to be on my side. I don't know so if you don't hear me, it's, um, you know, you need to ask me. Uh, talking about violin, yesterday I uh, started to watch a documentary about Jeredy Menuhin, and I really loved it. Uh, it's beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And I, it, it's two hours, so I, I watched one hour and a half, and then it was 11, and I wanted to go to bed. But it's really worthwhile. And this person in his 80s now, and he's emanating a, a liveliness and a goodness, and you know the, the the how he speaks with this these eyes really. Also, you see that he has become a grown-up person through his life, a, a developed person. That's I really like. I can give you the link. It is on Medici. Uh, maybe you cannot see it because you uh, have no. Um, no, um, how do you say abonnement? No registration. No, I, I pay for that. So maybe you cannot see it. Anyway, maybe I in this. Now, coming back to me, we have um, done the olive harvest last week. Yesterday, we went to the, to the mill and we had quite a good, uh, not a good harvest, but a good percentage on the oil. And the relation between olives and oil was quite good. So it, in some way, it made up for the, uh, let's say, loss of, of olives because they were tiny, 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 most of them, because of the drought which we had here. And still, I mean, it, it has rained twice now since May, let's say, or something, or since June. It's not really a lot. But slowly, slowly, the grass is coming out. Normally, at this time of the year, grass is high like this. And it's still quite brown with a little bit green. And it was a strange year, but we have good oil. That's one thing. And then the, the I like the to work to work in the sense with the children. And I do I, um, I did before we started. I read them fairy tales, and then also. We look into some books, easy books in Italian, and you know, I I develop my idea of holistic teaching, which is not uh, referred to music or to, to other subjects of life. So, I really like that. And the question, who knows me really? That's a good question. Let's say who 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 has some candidate of <laughs> of in their life who knows you well really well i mean from as monia said not from the inside not only from the outside but what is really going on with you who wants to start before we start can we say happy birthday to you you had your birthday since we last saw you and I just want to say, Heidi, as well, thank you for your newsletter. I cannot tell, you showed me something about you in your writing. I mean, I've read a lot of your writing before, but when I started reading that email, something happened to me. It's like I'm there with you. So whatever it was, I've never read something like that from you before. So I just wanted to recognize that today and to thank you for that because it was really extraordinary reading it. Thank you. Oh, thank you. I did it on Saturday night because I realized uh, I, and on Friday before the day before, I realized that, that it was birthday of Mark. But then in the morning, I forgot it. 
And then in the evening, I thought, oh, I, I, and that would be a good occasion of writing the newsletter. I also wrote on Mark's Facebook account, I wrote a piece. I don't know if you saw that. And um, as if he uh, talked from, you know, from the other side. So that's uh, what I'm doing twice a year, more or less, on his uh, on his dying day, on, on his birthday. And I was in this mood. It, it was late at night. It was about 10 o'clock where I normally don't work anymore, but it was an inspiration to do that. So thank you for the feedback. <laughs> okay. But I think Mark knew me a little bit, most probably than all the other people in my life. <laughs> okay, Gertra. Yeah, I second what Hanili said. <laughs> so happy birthday from, I think, all of us. And uh, yeah, and thank you yeah. for being in our lives. Thank you. And the nice thing was, no, uh, in the in the newsletter I wrote it under the picture, that was a common birthday with me, the oldest and the, the youngest of seven years. The one she's always in my flat here and uh, stroking the dogs and uh, always around. It was really nice. <laughs> a, a gap of more than 60 years between us, but <laughs> beautiful. Thank you. Uh, Heidi, could you send it to me again? I couldn't, I can't find it, your newsletter. I don't know how. And I wanted to ask Victoria, did you watch the Lucid Dreaming workshop? No, I couldn't, unfortunately, but I, did you? I went, I'd love no, to No, no, it was too late. It was at, oh. after midnight, uh, but oh, he registered okay. and uh, he will repeat it tomorrow. And then he will send it out. And I, right, I've right. been swamped with invitations for workshops. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know the feeling. Well, Beatrice, um, that was exactly the time of, I, I, I was intending to watch it, but Beatrice, it was exactly the time of her performance. So of course uh -huh. I was at the performance and it was wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. You should, you should, um, well, anyway, we'll talk about that. Uh, and uh, something else that I don't know if this is in connection with the question. But I, I see you tidying up your music room and all these unused possibilities for your talent sitting there and not being used. Uh, is there anybody else who knows that, that you don't use your music room anymore? Sorry, my computer did something weird again. Um, is there anybody meeting? who knows that you don't use your music room anymore? Um, it's a pretty well kept secret <laughs> because I think I'd lose my reputation. Um, Beatrice knows it, and um, my amanuensis slash housemate slash friend <laughs> knows it, and. Um, I think that's it. I well, my therapist. <laughs> ah, there is someone who really knows you well. <laughs> yeah. Nah. Nah. For me, I'm just thinking um, there are some people that know something about me. Um, and I thought the one I'm now doing the training with, Stefan, you, you met Eko, who, who did the training before me. Um, the reflow training. There is something to him that it's not about knowing. I mean, not about like he has all the information he needs to know more, but there's something about him that I feel seen and heard and that something happens that I get, he, he gets 
who I am or yeah so this is like not an intellectual thing or an emotional even it's more yeah I something that helps me expand into who I am <laughs> and not being afraid so much anymore so it's like like the, a very good well-kept secret and and so that there is space to expand myself i i don't find better words but yeah so maybe he doesn't know much about me but somehow i feel seen and heard a lot more than with anybody i know To me comes the question, do we know ourselves? I have learned a lot about myself in the last, let's say, 30 years or something, 25, 28. I started, I think, my first therapy was 40. So, and um, maybe I know myself best of everyone else outside of me. I don't know. Uh, is it? Well, after 55 years, my husband really knows me well. Uh, but it took some time for me to open up to him because we had then an ice age of a couple of years, even maybe longer. And yeah, and the older we get, the better we know each other. And of course, we dose it with a lot of humor because getting old is not for the faint hearted. And, but apart from him and from the man I just separated from, which is one of the first separations in my life that I consciously conducted. Uh, even my daughters don't know me that well, because there are, I know there are certain areas I couldn't talk to them about, and I didn't want to be a missionary was about my interests. I've always been, even, and also the grandchildren, I always try to find, let them find their own way. I don't know, how interested is one in, in one's mother be known by her? Just comes to my mind because my mother has been dead for 20 years now. Monia, I didn't appreciate that. Beatrice is here listening. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sorry, I I forgot. <laughs> Nevertheless, I think it's a good question. Uh, I mean, I couldn't, my daughter sort of blocked talking ever about sex. They would have never talked to, about sex to me. And yeah, and I wouldn't have talked to my mother about sex. So uh, there are some areas uh, I keep, well, I don't keep them secret, but I keep them protected. Let's put it this way. Okay, I pass on to whoever feels pulled into this conversation. Well, I think the more I hear you, all of you share, the more I realize it's, um, of course, God, but, um, but that's, that's a bigger topic than our topic today. <laughs> um, and next to God, I would say, um, my late husband, Conrad, because hearing all of you share it, it sort of put the pieces together. I was thinking of him anyway, but I was wondering because he loved me so unconditionally. He was like 
the human face of God for me. I was wondering at the beginning of this meeting today whether he really did know me because how could he love me unconditionally if he really knew me? But I have to say now, listening to all of you, I, I, he still, yeah, it, it has to, he has to be the person who knew me best. Um, which, yeah, that raises a whole huge topic too, because what, what does that mean? I, it's hard for me to accept. I can accept it from God because it seems like it's, you know, God's playing by the rules. Um, but I, it's, 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 it's shocking to accept it from a human being. I mean, for me. So um, that's why I have a therapist. So that's my whole story in a nutshell. <laughs> Um, I was going to say that I, I think my husband has taught me things about myself, um, <clears throat> usually in a painful way, because usually what he points out are things that I um, are shadow things and things that I'm not aware of, uh, that he's aware of. Um, so I've learned things about myself through him. Um, and I guess the question that I had uh, when Monia asked was, well, if people don't know me, I think that's on me for the most part. I feel like I have people in my life who would like to know me better, but I am an Enneagram one, so I don't want to mess with that facade <laughs> of perfection. So I just let that be. Um, but also, I think I, I keep things from people because uh, I don't like I don't tell them all my woes because I don't want them to think badly of my husband or I don't want them to think badly of my children because in long term relationships, if you tell all your secrets to people, they start to build up. I'm sure you guys have had girlfriends who you know, once they know some of the things, the unpleasant sides of your spouse or your children, they form an opinion, um, which can be hard down the road. Um, so I think I'm a little protective of some of those things so that other people don't form negative impressions uh, of my loved ones. And also I, I, I don't share some things because I think they would end up being sources of friction. Um, and that mostly has to do, I think, with, you know, the kind of the most inner things about beliefs and what we value most deeply. And when I have differences, you know, with my sister, we have differences about what we value in life. And um, so I don't share as much of that. And I'm sure she also kind of curbs some of that as well, knowing that we don't overlap with that. Um, I'm sure she curbs what she tells me a little bit. But it, again, it, it is in the service, I think, of the relationship. Maybe not. Maybe it's not in the service of the relationship. Maybe it would be better just to, you know, expose everything. But I am not entirely sure because I'm not entirely sure that most people are unconditionally loving as Conrad was. Um, that's, that's a very rare thing. So you're very lucky, Victoria. Um, so I guess I'm asking, do you think not letting people know everything is in service of the relationship and, and a protective factor that is helpful? Or do you think it's always a hindrance if they don't know everything? Well, I wasn't really thinking about uh, private, very private things but things that interest me or things I burn for. And whenever I started to talk about uh, the integral map or, of consciousness, there was this all of a sudden a blank look and people just couldn't follow. So uh, they didn't ask me any more about it and I didn't tell them any more about it. Um, and of course I didn't, talk to anybody about my tantric experiences because that's not accepted in society yet. 
and apart from my husband, he know he knew and he uh, supported me there. So that was what maybe uh, Victoria's unconditional love I found out in my husband as well after about 45 years, 50 years. Yeah, <laughs> it takes some time. <laughs> unconditional love takes some time. Not everybody's as lucky as you, Victoria. Yeah, that was, um, so uh, being protective, mostly being protective for others as well, not just for yourself, keeps from tech. But if people are not interested in some things and amazingly nobody in our friends, or among our friends was ever interested in uh, evolution or consciousness. And that's the way it is. It's a very interesting question. And as you both were speaking now, Christine and Monia, what emerged for me was there's this part of me that, say, that I deem sacred. That, and you can call it protection, but I just know I have to protect it with my life, so to speak. And my own experience is because I was always in my own journey. Um, when I started really waking up, I was, where I live in, in South Africa, I was always the only one who were doing things in the USA or in Europe or in Turkey or wherever I went. So I, and I could never find somebody here who understood what I was busy going through. So then I just stopped because it's like you say, it's like they just have no, they get blank, they have no idea. And I've even been told by friends in Europe that I should stop being so enlightened, being enlightened. And I was like horrified. I'm just myself. <laughs> and I was horrified at that at some stage as well. So it's, but I do know this, the sacred part in me that I do protect. And I, what also came up while you were all sharing was the sense of knowing me or feeling me. So I can feel a lot of people. I can feel their soul. So the personality I might not know or, or all the things that's going on in the persona and in the psyche, but I can sense the being. And for me, that is more valuable than knowing all the other stuff. Because I do feel that's where we truly connect with each other. And I've met amazing people from different parts of the world where there's just this instant connection without knowing any of their stories. And I have always felt that the stories might be a distraction from the real self. And I really prefer rather to connect to that deep, it's very juicy part of them that I can feel and sense. And there is a knowing, but it's on a different level. So I'm, I know with rather than knowing about that I prefer. And that for me has always been very fulfilling to be able to, to have that openness between people where they allow you, because I also do believe we allow others to see those to connect on that levels with us. So it's we who's got, got the blinders on for whatever reason. And yeah, the collective, yeah, to feel that with you all, it's always for me, um, it's thrilling. It's, 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 it's the sense of life itself. So thank you. For that. So is that felt sense always mutual? Like, do you ever sense something and you, they're not sensing you, or do you always have a mutual experience of that? No, that's, a lot of people have no idea. But I sense that the, I, I call it auric, auric communication. So it, it, I can feel the energy going like this on an energetic level, but it's not necessarily on a conscious level that the other person's aware of it. And I've learned also not to speak about it because some people get freaked out by, about by because they don't understand it on a cognitive level, uh, because they don't have a frame of reference for it. So I've just learned to just allow it to happen and not question it. But I can feel it. For me, my truth lies in the sense that I can feel. It. So it doesn't matter if they not if it's not mutual, because I can feel the energy moving, and there is information in that energy that's moving back and forth. I, I hope that helps.
for, for me, there are two distinct things um, that Haneli was talking about and, and Monia to, to say um, how to be oneself and be known, some, something like that. And the other one, what Christine was talking about. Um, the best friends are those I can complain about my husband or whomever, and they don't make anything about it. So they are out of it. They don't like him or them less, or they don't, they just take it and yeah, and say, okay, now do you feel better? <laughs> Something like that. And um, so there are very few, just a few ones. One, I told you that her husband died. So I know them from baby swimming. Um, yeah, and uh, very few others that I can be that open without being afraid of giving them a story they make out of and then uh, be differently with my loved ones. So I'm, I'm very much looking whom I'm talking about what. So, so that's because I think that that is for me, it doesn't have integrity if I'm just complaining and not, not being aware of my, what they might do with it. Um, and the other one, what Taneli was talking about and, and Monia, it's really like, how can I be in, re, in connection on the level I would like to? <laughs> and uh, maybe have some people that resonate with it where it's mutual. So uh, acquaintance that I have read uh, Ken Wilbur back and forth, but I'm not sure I'm, I'm integral. So for me, it's like I can somehow grasp, so grasp what he said, but this is not me yet. <laughs> so I'm, I'm not, not, and I thought that was very humble because most people think because they understand a little bit <laughs> than they are integral. Yeah, and, and so I'm, I'm, I'm just, yeah, I, I don't know yet how to how to deal with. Um, there's a, a children's book called Momo, and she comes back from Meister Hora where she saw her heart flower, and her friends are gone. And then there is one sentence that that there are riches you might perish off if you cannot share them. And yeah. Sometimes I feel like that. So, and one of the possibilities is here <laughs> and with some other people, but in normal life, it's not, it's not possible all the time to, to say something and somebody else said, yeah, and, and then you have a super conversation. That's, that's rare. Yeah, and how, how to be with it and um, not feeling bad, but good to, yeah, to have your inner life and, and, and be with it. Even others don't, are not interested or are not able to follow that. Yeah. So my two cents on that. I wanted to say something about the opening of oneself. What does it depend on if we, because often I think now about complaining that nobody came to see her or only, you know, when I think I've told you already, when I arrived there and the day afterwards, she already said, uh, it was nice that you were here. So in this way, she always, so treated who came to see her but she didn't express this 
you know, this this joy. And so we have a way probably to to welcome people or to, to push them away. So what does it depend on? It's, it could also be social um, conditioning, you know, in another generation, don't tell anything about it, don't let anybody in. And I no noticed that on me too. And I worked on it a little bit, I would say. You notice now in these days and these months, there are so many inner things going on, so subtle inner things. And I would really like to be able to, to find words and to talk about it with somebody. And then it's coming back to Haneli, to this feeling. I, I now have a, an encounter on Zoom with a man I know from integral, uh, from integral meetings, but by chance via the ULAB, I knew him again. And so we meet once a month. And with him, I have this, what you are talking about, Hanley. That's not about telling story, a sort of authentic meeting and feeling each other. And it's really amazing how that is possible in, on, on Zoom. You know, uh, I, every time we, we, we meet, it sometimes I, I notice that it takes some time until we arrive at this level of, there are still words, but it's not, it's some more, it's the expression of the face and then the words and and then this energy, which is obviously uh, traveling 1,500 kilometers, you know? <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's interesting how we, whom we allow to see us. And often in, in family, for instance, we are brought up, we didn't see each other, the, the children, not really. We try to defend ourselves against the others to not to be overtaken, overrun, and so on. So we didn't really learn that. And so for me, it's a achievement if we are able to, to show who we are. Listening to Gertrude, I noticed that some of the friends who have died knew me quite well. So why have they to go and others just keep on? <laughs> and yeah. Hmm. Do you still have a connection with those people? I don't talk to dead people, no. Uh, I don't go to seances, and but I do have a gratefulness when thinking of them. And as I told you today, I went to the grave of my mother to the cemetery, and uh, my son-in-law came with me, and we, there is a connection with him. He is. Uh, a libra and he's very uh, I feel very comfortable when he's around so yeah and I don't know if he knows me well but I don't care actually because as long as he does so many things which I can't do anymore I'm very grateful yeah but this really struck me now when I was listening to Gertra that some of them who really knew me well have died. And that's, as I said before, old age is not for the faint hearted. And I, I try to let go as much as I can. And I just cherish as I cherish the conversations with you to continue. But I dropped most of my other official uh, roles in the last couple of weeks. And I should feel lighter, but I'm sort of empty. And that's something I have to get used to. So if you hear echoes, that's the emptiness in me. <laughs> Beatrice, what about you? Um. I was thinking about how we each contain 
multitudes in terms of roles and personalities and even life in life chapters and I don't know I think it's a really interesting thought to think about who is who is someone who knows you in your totality because the people who know me in one context know me in that context and I'm not the same person in that context as I am in another I mean yes at the core but but people bring out different sides of me in different arenas based on conversation, based on social things, based on work things, based on whatever, right? Um, you know, and with some people, I become a very shy and intimidated person. And then I respond differently to things from that place, you know, and with other people, I'm very confident, you know, and it's just, it's so um, interrelational. Um, yeah, I think one person who knows me very deeply um, is my friend, uh, my best friend from childhood, Gabriel. Gabe, I call him Gabe. I don't know why I said his full name just now. Um, but the irony there is we hardly ever talk. So if, it, if knowing me has to do with knowing about every single thing that's going on in my life, then he doesn't know me at all. <laughs> but if knowing me has to do with understanding how I see the world at a kind of core deep level and fully accepting me in whatever context or emotion or situation I'm in and seeing through cutting through years of knowledge and cutting through all of the chaos and anxiety to kind of zero in on, well, this is actually what you're capable of. Anyway, I don't know. It's an interesting question. Mama, you know me too. I haven't excluded you. I know you're sitting there <laughs> wondering. <laughs> but I thought I'd... I Take it out of this room for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, 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 I don't. I, I wish I knew you, but I, <laughs> I don't have a clue who you are. Um, <laughs> no, I agree with you about about Gabe. Um, he, but um, yeah, that's my great sorrow because he loves you the way Papa loved me, and he knows you the way Papa knew me. But he's dysfunctional, so. I keep, uh, this is a whole topic for our group <laughs> is, is um, I've, I've promised Beatrice that if she marries Gabe, I will raise him. Cause she said, if she has children, she doesn't need an extra child. <laughs> He's like an angel. He's not of this world. So I've, I've always wanted to raise him up to be an adult, <laughs> but I think it's a hopeless cause. Ladies, I need to go in three minutes. Um, so just to let you know. So do the checkout, you can do the checkout round. Yeah, it's uh, kind of open. <laughs> I think there is no, we have not come to a conclusion. We're like uh, pondering on that question and it might, need some more time to do that. And also what we want or what supports us, how people know us. <laughs> so something like that or is knowing somebody helpful? <laughs> In which way? I, I'm just thinking. <laughs> yeah. So, how can we evolve? And what supports that? Instead of the only the knowing part. Yeah. yeah thank you, Gertrud. Nice that you have been here again. Yeah. So see you in a bit. Yeah.
Thank you. I thought it is an interesting question which Gerthard raised just now, you know, who in some way, who is knowing us, what is it bringing for us uh, in, in terms of uh, growing up? And immediately came into my mind the story I had with one of my husbands, no, who was borderline. And I, he really knew me and he knew how to get me. So it can also be uh, somebody knowing you can also be a problem, you know. <laughs> but we could maybe talk another time. Um, we could continue the checkout round or if you still have um, uh, something bringing up, I'm fine with it. I was thinking about um, the idea of protecting yourself and others and what is it, how can we create spaces where we act, we feel safe and other people feel safe to be seen, to be fully seen. I, I think this is, this is kind of what, what I aim to do with my, with my, my work, my art, art making um, and also probably, you know, and why I pursued creating space for grief. I think, I think I'm all, <laughs> I'm a big, big advocate of, of creating spaces where everyone in the space feels safe enough to be seen and be vulnerable. And I think it's, it's a really challenging and tough world out there. And it's, those are rare. It's really rare to find, find spaces like that and to find people that are willing to be that space. So anyway, I was just thinking about that, about, you know, what, there's certainly parts of myself that I protect or hide away, you know, and depending on who I'm with or where I am. So anyway, that's not much of a conclusion, just the pond, continuing the pondering. Thank you, Beatrice. You remind me of something that happened after I did the ULAB in 2015. I went to, I was invited to Turkey to speak at a conference and then I intuitively and very spontaneously did a sensing learning journey with the airport company there. And they have 10,000 people working for them. And we could only, because I was only going to stay another day, I only could fit in three sessions. And all we did is allow people to speak up not about work, nothing. I had a few questions for them that they could talk about or they could talk about anything. And because of that culture, the men's cried. It was they never had the opportunity in a business environment to share from the heart. And when they, at the end of the day, they said that they never had the opportunity on this level to connect with each other at work because it, they didn't speak about work. It was about what was going on in their own lives. And the men specifically, they were the ones who was mostly touched by this themselves because they never had the opportunity to be so vulnerable to share what was going on in their lives that other people didn't know about. And then how their colleagues simply held the space for them. Nobody spoke back. There wasn't a discussion or trying to fix or solve or anything like that. And how deeply touched they all were by each other's stories. It was just incredible to see such a culture, the men, to just break down. Uh, in their suits and ties and just being human. And I still treasure that, that I was able to be present to this. Um, and now that you spoke what you said, Beatrice, you remind me of that. Thank you for that, because we forget about this. And to create such spaces is so valuable, especially in the times that we live in. Well, I do not have much to add to this discussion. I'm gonna be thinking about it some more and thinking about ways to connect. And I'm curious about auric communication. You've, you've piqued my interest, Connelly. Um, yeah, so uh, I'm good. I, I think it was a good session. Today went really quickly for me. So that was an interesting conversation. Thank you.
Yeah, I'll join Christine and I'm also interested in auric communication. <laughs> uh, wondering how much I do it or don't. Uh, I never really thought about it before, actually. But of course, it's maybe it's uh, the way I look at people that sort of gets them on their toes. I don't know, it's, it's just, but of, I remember a couple of people I met only very shortly or but under special circumstances like driving, he was driving a boat uh, down the Danube and we joined him there. And he said, well, uh, Monica, you're an intense person. So how did he know? And that's so some people have the way of looking at you and seeing you and others just don't. That's the way it is. It's comfortable not to be seen in your totality, I should say. That's my checkout. <laughs> and thank you for this conversation. It's really moving, yeah. Victoria, do you want to say last word? Um, <clears throat> Well, I just wanted to say that, that this, this session this morning um, proved conclusively why I'm not planning anytime soon to give up my computer because <laughs> in, favor, in favor of my horribly out of tune organ and piano um, <laughs> in the other room, I think, I think that um, something I, it's something I think the whole world has learned during the pandemic that there is no substitute at all for human relationships and for um, and especially when they go beyond the superficial. And I'm just so grateful and I just want to thank you again, Heidi and I um, I'm sorry I missed your birthday I would have sung for you <laughs> or no, you're the singer I would have played for you. Um, on my out of tune instruments. <laughs> um, but I just, I'm just so grateful to have this, this group because um, even, even if I could see all the people that I know, you know, in person here, um, I don't think any of them would, would, you know, hold a candle to any of you in terms of the, I think the, the, the profound bond that we have. And it almost, to me, it almost doesn't matter what we talk about. I mean, these topics that we choose or don't choose, it's, it's at the end of the day, it's, it's really irrelevant. I feel like it's not irrelevant, but I mean, it's, I think to me, the, the nourishing, the most nourishing thing is that we know that we care about each other. And here we are scattered across the world and, um, and we're here for each other. It's just, it's such a beautiful thing and it's profound and, um, I don't know anything about auric communication, but I know that whatever the communication is that we're having is, is, um, is very profound. And it's not the words we're saying, it's just our beings and our being together and our choosing to, to, to have this, you know, to, to be together um, regardless of what's going on in our, you know, our daily lives. So I just wanna thank everybody and I love all of you. And I'm really, really, really grateful. Yeah, thank you, Christine. Do you want to <clears throat> say something still? No, no I, I checked out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I wasn't sure now because it was half check out, half not. And I still not check out, but maybe I do. I wanted to refer to the message which Hanneli sent into the chat. And I'm sorry about your friend who died, but I really understand what you mean with this friendship. I have about 13 years now, and she was here for, for three months with me, and she was very young then, 24, and there's still this age gap, and we sometimes don't hear from each other for, for to something arrives, or she sends me something, or last, in this summer, they were in front of my house, they came uh, just stopping by with their camper, you know, and then it's like, no time has passed, although we have become uh, a little older, both of us. She has now two children. So yeah, that's a beautiful feeling to, to know 
that people are there, even if you don't have to keep connection in this normal sense, no? because the connection is there. Yeah, maybe that would be my check out. And I noted that we could, uh, when we think about it next time, to create how to create the safe spaces for ourselves and for others. That would also be a, a good a good topic. And in some way, I feel that we have a safe space, although other people can can listen to it because there is not um, we don't have the need to hide what we are saying. So that's good. I like this. And thank you for being part of the Wisdom Factory, which is still alive, although it's a little bit reduced in these days. <laughs> okay, we see in two weeks. Bye-bye. <laughs>